Good morning, YouTube. You'll notice that we are not in the garage. We are in my office, as it were. And I have Adam and Megan here. And what we're gonna do today is something completely different than something we've ever done. We're gonna go through my personal insurance policy. So are you recording all of the nefarious activities? And because we have an insurance expert here. Well, let's not get carried away. More so than I am. Okay. Okay. Oh. Buy probably a lot. <laughs> We're going to go through my policy. Adam's going to discuss it. We're going to discuss it. We're going to ask dumb questions. He's going to answer them. Adam might be able to dispense some, some interesting anecdotes from his days. Yeah. We want to do this on my policy, and then eventually we're going to talk to an expert who knows declared value policies and stuff like that, because that is obviously a big concern with these sorts of cars. But my policies are not declared value policies. And I don't know anything about declared value policies because they weren't anything that I ever... Right. Geico doesn't have it. Best so forgive the background noise if you hear the dog and stuff, because we're in the house. And well, <laughs> it's a house. So anyway, that's what we're going to do today. So we're going to pull up my policy on the computer. We're going to show it on the screen, discuss it. So it should be interesting. Yeah. Or not. I think so. Or not. <laughs> no, I... It's, it's, admittedly, it's going to be boring, all right? No, it's going to be boring, no, but the fascinating. The people who find I, it interesting will find it very interesting. Yes. Well, I, I think people are going to find it compelling because if you don't have proper insurance, right. you can well, lose literally all of you, everything. Right. You all have seen the crap that we're dealing with. So It's emotionally compelling to people who can actually afford supercars. Yes. Yeah. So obviously this is very important and it's a huge component of buying supercars and it's something that almost every single consultation client we've had has discussed with us. So we thought it was a, probably about time we talk about it. So here we go. Okay, YouTube. We are in my USAA account, which has my auto insurance policy. So first off, insurance is very fickle and every situation is completely different. So this is just general knowledge. This isn't uh, specific to any particular situation you may have. So the best course of action is to always speak to your insurance company. And then also I cannot speak to things like uh, safe driver discounts and stuff like that because those are carrier specific. Right. Some carriers don't even yeah, uh, offer awkward. it. And then also things like new car purchases that I think uh, Liberty Mutual offers. Again, that's something that uh, you'd have to speak to them about because they have specifics different from like USAA or State right. Farm, right, stuff right. like that. So this is just a broad general overview. So we use USAA, yeah. obviously, because we make certain assumptions that it's good. Because well, I mean, it's. It, I it, believe USA is a good insurance company. They are not cheap. No, they are not the not. cheapest. The very few claims that we've had with USA have gone very smoothly. Yeah, and that's why we're using them. That's not to say other insurance companies aren't as good. <laughs> it's just that's what, and just, and we've been using them for like over 20 years insurance is so well regulated that generally speaking any insurance company that you've heard of before is going to pay out their claims some might be easier to work with than others but if it's a company you've seen commercials for chances are they're gonna pay out claims like they should first thing on the list is comprehensive correct so comprehensive is something that is not a vehicle to vehicle accident so this is generally something that's like Acts of God, if you want to call it that. Hail damage, vandalism, you know, somebody skiing your vehicle, puncturing the sidewalls in your tires, what stuff if I, like that. What if I'm driving down the road and I hit an inanimate object? Is the object moving or is it standing still? Uh, let's say it's a uh, shredded tire from a truck, so it's just sitting there. Then that would be collision. Oh, it's collision? Yes. If it's moving, if like the object. Like a deer? Like a deer. If it's moving, okay. it is uh, comprehensive. If it's, really? If it's sitting still, it's collision. What's if an asteroid? An asteroid's moving because it's falling from so the Earth. It's comprehensive. <laughs> yeah, it's comprehensive. Interesting. So if it's moving, it's comprehensive. Okay. You, the, I believe the official uh, terminology you'll see if you actually read the entire policy is missile, I believe is the word they use. <laughs> missile? <laughs> yeah. Well, then asteroid is totally well placed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So. Well, I mean, because the reason I asked is because, like, the, uh, remember the, the damage to my 458 mm -hmm. was like a water pump that the truck in front of me hit, mm -hmm. which caused it to move. So it was moving. That would be comprehensive. Oh, God damn it. Claiming it would have been not too terrible. Cause yeah. Cause obviously, yeah. comprehensive claims don't hurt you as bad as collision. Yeah, generally speaking, they don't. Um, every 
company has a different underwriting theory, I guess would be the word for it, <laughs> or process that they go through and how they weight different things. But generally speaking, comprehensive does not uh, negatively infect, affect you as collision okay. would. So on my policy, you can see we've got the Murcielago, my Dodge Ram, or the Ram, sorry, the Ram, uh, the Gallardo, the Mini Mini Clubman, the 599, and my trailer, Yep, all under my comprehensive policy, all of them with a $1,000 deductible, and yep. then you can see the various premiums ranging all the way from my God. 494 a month. <laughs> Uh, what's Fortnite? What's Freedom? That's the trailer. <laughs> oh, the trailer is the, tra a, the trailer is called Freedom. The manufacturer is like Freedom America okay. or something. <laughs> I was gonna say. I know it's yeah. still, it's silly, but uh, Freedom isn't free. Your freedom's on five dollars a uh, six months. So yeah, minor ten dollars a year. You notice it says per six months. So yep. uh, the the Mercy costs almost eight hundred bucks. A year in comprehensive. My God, look the Ferrari and the Lamborghinis. Yeah, look at the difference between those and like the Dodge Ram is only <laughs> fifty bucks. You're, I'm surprised your Mini costs more than the Ram, considering the Ram cost mm -hmm. literally twice as much to mini, buy. Mini parts are much more expensive. I guess so. I used to cringe whenever I saw a Mini. Online. Really? I guess they're BMW parts. So. Uh, well, that and they just don't have the same market share, so the parts. Okay. Are, oh yeah, I can yeah. see that. So Dodge Ram or Ram parts. Are, yeah, they're, they're dime a dozen. Plentiful. Yeah, they're okay. a dime a dozen. Well, you're in the U.S., yeah. So let's go down. Here's the collision. All right, so, so this is if it, you hit somebody else. Impact We're paying this in addition to the comprehensive? Well, right. No, so don't I, worry, it gets worse. I just spoke. Oh, spoke. my God. Collision covers your vehicle if you hit somebody else. Liability covers their vehicle when you hit it. But oh, okay. collision... Covers. So like this is I ram your car. This covers my car. You, this will repair your vehicle, and your liability would repair my vehicle. Okay. So collision covers your vehicle. Gotcha. Okay. For things other than comprehensive. Well, yeah. so you can see, obviously, this got way more expensive on certain categories. <laughs> Good lord. Interesting enough, the Ferrari got more expensive than the Lamborghini. Why know. would that be the case? But that's what it's suggesting. Those exotics from Italy. I don't know. Yeah, but it's only a two dollar difference. True. Yeah, it's but, negligible. But Stop really, drawing attention to that. Well, what's fascinating is the guy, the Superleggera, is cheaper than both the five ninety nine and the Versailles. I'm gu guessing they're assuming it will probably total because it's a Superleggera. Oh, so it's there's to there's fix. even fewer parts out there than there than mm. the already few parts. Oh man, my Freedom trailer went up to almost. A Eight bucks, seven dollars and twenty nine cents. What the hell? Thousand dollar deductible. So what's the deductible mean? So if you're the total amount of the estimate is fifteen thousand dollars to repay to repair your vehicle. When you go to the body shop to pick up your vehicle when it's repaired, you will owe a thousand dollars or whatever your deductible is on your policy right. to the body shop because your insurance company would have only paid fourteen thousand dollars. So you basically owe the outstanding balance. The difference. That's the part that you're gambling on, basically. Okay. And you can get $0 deductibles. I've seen it's it. It's really expensive. <laughs> I uh, only saw it like two or three times the entire time. We, I was can, we can go through and try and see how much it changes and not actually submit the it's changes. It's like, if you get a $0, $0 deductible, it's basically you're, you're like, I'm, oh yeah, I'm going to hit something. <laughs> The problem is... I mean, that's the assumption you're making. Well, that's the only reason to do it. It's yeah. like, you, you're like, I suck at driving, so... Well, I'm pretty sure I'm going to hit something. Yeah. I own a Volvo, and I'm going to hit someone, <laughs> so... It's, My car will be fine. Or you, yeah. have, a, or you have, like, yeah. a 16-year-old. Right, right. You're like, well, this but, is going to happen. But Good then Lord, how a, expensive would that yeah, be? Uh, you can't you, put a 16-year-old on a Ferrari. You can, it's just good can. luck. It depends on the No policy. one's going to do it for you. It depends I mean, on the policy. Clearly, so clearly you can because we know 16-year-olds driving Ferraris. Car replacement assistance. This is unique to USAA. It says basically, uh, in the event of a total loss, this coverage pays an additional 20% of your vehicle's actual cash value. If you were upside down, this would help you. Or if you just want to get a new car. It, I would ask lots of questions about that because is it... For any vehicle, or do you have to buy the same? Like if, uh, like if your Ram was totaled, do you have to buy another Ram? Like I, I those are know. the questions I, I just, would ask. Well, this says it just gives you an extra twenty percent. Yeah, maybe. So I don't. Either way, yeah. I declined it. Yeah. Because I like whatever. If my car gets totaled, I don't need to make money on the car. Right. I just want to be paid what what it's worth. Okay. Next is the big one. Here we go. Under uh, uninsured slash 
underinsured motorist property damage. So this is what you may see if you guys are going to look at your policies now. It may just say UMPD. That's what that is. Yes. And this is the one that we talked about a lot on the Ferrari California This incident. is very relevant to the re recent circumstances yes. of some lady hitting Dan's right. so, Ferrari California. So feel free to interject, but from the way I understand it is this is basically saying if my car is involved in a collision that is not my fault mm -hmm. and someone else's insurance isn't enough to cover my car, mm -hmm. this will kick in. Mm -hmm. and pay up to, on my policy, $300,000 per accident. As was the case with lady who hit Ferrari right. California, yeah. so who it, carried the Texas minimums right. so in of the case, 25, in the case of the, In the case of California, our underinsured motorist policy kicked in and covered the balance of the car as opposed to our, so it actually falls under this policy, not the collision policy, right? Correct, and that's, that's, so a that's big thing. the interesting thing, because this is basic, some people will not purchase this because it's somewhat in a way double insuring your vehicle, because say for example, we were in the same situation with the California, her insurance right. doesn't have enough. If Pietro did not have UMPD, he could have still gotten it covered under collision. But then, it's, but then policy it policy would have gone. It on. could be considered an at fault accident. Could be depends on how the right. uh, company handles that thing internally, because there's no specific law that says you know it would well, or wouldn't would be that, or yeah. anything. That that's up to each specific company. And then also, I'm not in each sure. specific state, right? Yeah, and, yeah, and, and that's unique. what I was about to say. So see, in Texas, you'll notice that all your other deductibles are a thousand dollars. You see where it says you pay two fifty per accident. That's a Texas. Thing. Right, Texas requires UMPD is every yeah, it's two fifty uh, per. I was just noticing that it specifically says if your vehicle is damaged in a car accident or the other driver is at fault, which is what happened, mm -hmm. this coverage pays to repair or replace the if the other's insurance doesn't have enough coverage. Yep. Which is exactly what happened. So another thing to keep in mind is this will slow down claim process a little bit uh, because what will happen is. Before USA would pay your claim out under UMPD, they would have to get a letter from, in this case, Geico saying this policy does fault. not, well, beyond that, oh. this policy does not cover or does not have sufficient coverage. Sufficient, yeah, exactly. So, how does this work in no fault states? How does it work? Totally different. Who knows? Totally different. Nobody knows. Not even insurance companies know how it works. Because there's a no bunch of no fault states. So we come Michigan. from Michigan. No, Michigan's a no Michigan's fault. Michigan's the only one. So Michigan's the only no yeah. fault state. Last I checked. How did were. that? How did that come to be? I came from the only no, no fault, fault state. No fault's weird because it's yeah. good and bad. It's good because your car is always covered. Yeah. My policy always covers my car. The downside is every single claim always makes my rates go up. Oh, oh man, it's hard to be a supercar owner in Michigan from yeah. more than one perspective. You don't you just don't go want to, to Montana. So like that's where <laughs> in Michigan it's like you really don't want to make a claim unless you have to. At the and same time, I, I was a teenager in in Michigan with two brothers who were also not the best drivers yeah, in the world. Well, you guys had at, at fault incidents, so it didn't matter. It was, a bunch of them. It was gonna go up. Um, yeah. So we got kicked <laughs> off my dad's USAA at one point because they were like, "We're not gonna insure you people." So UMPD <laughs> is good to have. Um, if it's available. But if you, but also, you know, if you want to cut your bill and you're okay with the risk that your policy may go up, that's also something that you but look could. Look at that. It's only 110 bucks every yeah. six months. So every year we're only paying 200 and something dollars. If you have a very... And that's yeah. for 300 grand. Yeah. Correct. If you have a car that's very expensive. And that's in, a dumb one. In Austin, to. in Austin, I swear to God, every other car... It's over 300 grand. Not, know, but, not but, over 300. But, oh, sorry, over 100. Grand. But yeah. no, this, that won't help you on this. Yeah. This is for us. Yeah. yeah so this is, this is $220 a year to cover our own asses. Yeah. Basically. Yeah, it's to avoid a, a accident. Which you considered. should be able to afford if your car yeah. is more than 100 <laughs> Yeah, grand. so this to me is a no-brainer. Yes. I mean, I personally, I carry it on my policy. The lady who taught my uh, class, so to get my license in Texas, I had to go through a 40 hour class. Oh. Yeah, it was rough. <laughs> she was like, I don't buy uninsured motorists because it's, well, I mean, oh, if you think about it. Uncovered. Yeah, I mean, basically it is basically yeah, a double cover. I would want to be able to get my car fixed and not have my rates change. Right. You could make the argument, well, it's always a gamble, right? Like, yeah. Well, you if know, you're driving like a 10 year old Camry, 
Yeah, yeah, I don't guess. Get We're talking about supercars here, though. Yes, yeah. If you have, if even if you have a uh, a car that's expensive, period. Yeah, whatever, you, you, whatever it is. Frankly, if you're in Texas and your car is valued more than twenty five thousand dollars, you want this. Yeah, I would recommend it. Basically, even if you have not just supercars like SUVs and trucks. Yeah. Cost what? a huge amount of money. Yeah. You can buy a truck for a hundred grand now. Over, well and, over. And, and here's a litmus test. If you are questioning any of these insurance prices, get out of the supercar game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. If you if you're like, man, I don't want to pay that, don't buy Ferraris and Lamborghinis. But you'll oh my god. That I bet you that these premiums aren't as expensive as some people thought they were either. No, it's not as ridiculous as these yeah. Well, sure, everybody overestimates. Okay, so uh, the next one is liability. We have body, body injury. Hey, but but caveat, Dan yeah. and I have a good record as it as far as it goes for, for driving. driving. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we have no tickets. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. everything is and always... Yeah, moment, everything's individualized, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, that And does so help. our numbers reflect people with good driving records. Yeah, yeah. We're, not, yeah. we're not like yeah. a bunch of tickets and accidents and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Bodily injury liability is what your insurance will pay for their medical bills if you put them in the hospital. And property damage liability is what they'll pay to... Their car. Their car... Their brick wall, their, <laughs> their garage. Oh my god! Yeah, the light pole that you smash, anything like that. I mean, I could say I'm. I'm almost wondering if I'm not paying enough there. Three <laughs> hundred. That's you are definitely in the I top one percent of coverages. Really? And I'm I'm getting scared because I'm like, God, it would be really easy. If how you, are you going to be the type of guy who smashes into a light pole or a house? But you know how expensive. I that guarantee stuff is? you. Like ninety eight percent of those guys are under the influence, which is never going to be easy. How do you smash into a well, house completely also, sober? Also, the body injury thing. I mean, shoot, you hit someone and they get hurt. Easily could be correct. So, so, That's what's scary because yeah. you could easily easily be a really million bucks. Someone. So you'll notice that it will say we'll pay up to three hundred thousand, five hundred thousand. So yeah. what to keep in mind with that is the first number is what they'll pay per person. The second number is what they'll pay per incident. So if you hit a bus with 10 people in it, but they all only have $10,000 medical bills, you'll still yeah. be all right, right? But if they all have 10, like yeah. $50,000, yeah. well, then, then screwed. Yeah, you could, yeah. But what that, that second number is the total allotment. Now, if you have person that you hit, it's only one accident and their medical bills are $350,000, they'll only pay the $300,000 even though you have that 500,000 number because it's 300,000 per, per person. person. None of this stops a person from suing you civilly to come after Which you. We'll for get more into money. that. We'll get into that. We'll get, okay, yeah. yeah, I'm jumping ahead. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So then next is injury. Okay. So this is I'm assuming uh, So this is stuff for you. Okay, so I, I'm in an yeah. accident, I'm not at fault, yeah. I get injured. Right. Okay. So then this would cover your medical bills. What, even if I am at fault, though, right? No, because that's uninsured, underinsured motorist bodily injury. Okay. I'm not 100% sure on PIP, personal injury protection. That was... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I learned about Something it in the else. class, but it didn't pertain to what oh, my, okay. yeah, yeah. So my license is, was in, so I... So this is... So that same incident <laughs> with the Ferrari, I get... A neck injury and the lady has the texas minimums so they ain't paying my chiropractor the pot I, honestly i zoned out that part of the class because <laughs> it didn't pertain to me. <laughs> <laughs> and thankfully there weren't very many questions well i do the i do remember reading I, the test. I remember yeah. reading that um <laughs> this has to be linked to the other rate like probably that they that won't do it differently correct. so whatever i get messed up i get up to three hundred thousand dollars per me if the other person doesn't have if coverage, they don't have is what okay. it sounds like. Yeah, I don't. So here's Which the one. Which is very one. easy to escalate to that number with serious injuries. Right. So this one's interesting because it's only twenty five hundred per person, and it's pretty expensive. What the hell is this? Okay. Personal injury protection helps pay expenses for you and your passengers resulting from an auto accident related injuries, regardless of fault. Eligible expenses generally include medical, funeral, funeral. Disability. disability and lost income. Interesting. Okay. okay, that's the thing I don't know about. Like I said, that was a part of the class I zoned out because that there's uh, people that that's all they handle. Is yeah. The PIP. Okay, and then finally was medical payments. So I think that that's what you were talking about. If you were injured, they would pay your bills, but it looks like you declined that. Coverage. I declined it because I'm like, well, I have health care. Yeah. Coverage. So if I go to the ER, my health care coverage is going to kick in. Right. 
Up to a certain point. Well, yeah, but no, no. I mean, our health care limits are like infinite once you get past the deductible. Yeah, I suppose that's correct. And if I'm that injured that it's going past the, <laughs> the medical stuff on my policy, oh, okay. <laughs> Other coverage. Uh, accident forgiveness. This is a USA yeah. thing, which is pretty expensive, but basically it says like if we crash, they'll forgive us once. Yeah, and again, how that operates is completely different from company to company, so you'll have to... It, to me, it almost seems like you're just paying in advance for having an accident. Yeah. <laughs> it's well, kind of how I see it. I always figure you just don't know when you're going to get an accident, so... Oh my god. You too. How... How thankful was I that Dan was driving that Ferrari when he got hit by someone? <laughs> My worst nightmare is I'm going to be driving one of the supercars when something bad happens. That was to my it. worst nightmare. I here's the funny thing is no, I'm, it's my worst because well, then it's like Megan's a bad driver. Oh, well. rrr, rrr. I, if yeah. Dan gets hit, and no, somebody's like, you oh, it must be that other lady. Jokes yeah. would have written themselves. Yes, but, <laughs> but I have to say, I I knew I was thinking to myself someday one of these Ferraris. Is gonna get whacked. Yeah, it sure is. And it happened finally. And I was like, when it happened, the back of my mind, I thought, I can't believe this finally fucking <laughs> happened. With the business you're in, I know. It's no, it was a matter happen. of time. It was a matter of time. All right. Okay. So rental reimbursement. Get freaking rental reimbursement on your policy <laughs> if you don't have spare car. The most aggravating thing that I dealt with as an adjuster would people come in and be mad at me that they didn't have rental coverage and I couldn't pay for their rental vehicle. This is a good time to drop in. The reason why that they didn't is because they go, well, I asked for cool full coverage. Well, full coverage is not a thing. It doesn't exist. There's, there's comprehensive collision and liability. I guess, I suppose if you put those three things together plus... Rental re- reimbursement, you it's could full consider. coverage. There's no such thing as full coverage, so just keep that in mind. That's some well, weird layman term. And I have to, yeah. if you notice, I decline it on the Lamborghini Gallardo and 599 mm-hmm. because if those get wrecked, I don't need a car. I think it would be reasonable for supercar owners to decline it because if they own a supercar, they on the probably super, own on the vehicle. supercar. Yeah. But if you notice, I did not decline it on the Ram or your Clubman because if those get wrecked, you we do we do need a rental. That's, that's how true. that's how so we have rental coverage on the car my wife drives every day yeah. and we have it on my truck. Exactly. Cuz if those get damaged yeah. and it's not functional, you're going to need to still get a rental. Yeah. And you can see that the uh, coverage is pretty cheap. When you get a loaner, it's not as awesome as you think because you're still liable for that car. Yeah. So we had a loaner from Mini that one time. That's true. And we, we had it for like literally six hours or something like that. We had it for a day and we hit a nail and got a flat tire. We had to buy a new tire. Yeah. It, and they made us pay them like $600 for the tire. And it there is bullshit. nothing, nothing I could have done differently. Nope. I was driving to and from work. Yep. On the normal roads that I always one of those drive ones on. Where just like really, really. That's why, even with my rental coverage, I may not take a rental vehicle because I don't want to be liable for I somebody hate those else's damn vehicle. Things, yeah. So towing labor, obviously, this is if something happens, they'll come yeah. grab the car. Again, it's ten bucks every six months, twenty bucks a year, no brainer. Per car, yeah. Per car, but I mean, still ride share gap. This is if you're like doing Uber stuff. So we're not obviously. So ninety nine point nine percent of the policies out there do not cover Uber, Uber Eats, Favor, none of those. Even a lot of people are like, "Oh, I'm just carrying food around, not people." Doesn't matter. A well, lot of times, and I want to show you something else. We'll get into it just a second. So okay, so you can see we're paying a total of. Uh, Four thousand three hundred sixteen dollars every six. Oh, sorry, correction. Four thousand three hundred twenty nine dollars and seventy six cents every six months. So, a little over eight thousand six hundred thirty dollars or sixty dollars every six or a year. Um, That's really unfortunate. We're just gonna talk about it because I don't remember where it is in here. Somewhere in here, it's where you like set up the car itself. When Megan was working for her, I was. A mental health provider, and I worked in the community, right. and I used and occasionally, my occasionally, personal automobile. Once in a while, she would have to transport clients in her car. Not all the time, but once in a while. And what happened was, we learned a quick lesson from one of her coworkers because her coworker got in an accident, and they basically the insurance said, "Were you using it for business?" And they said, "Yes." And they said, "Well, your car is not covered technically." Mm-hmm. for this usage so they covered it but they dropped them yeah that's how most insurance companies will work so we said okay we're not going to take that risk it's not a guarantee but so we have her we had 
her mini listed for business use. I have my truck listed for business use. Even though I'm not really transporting stuff, every once in a while I could be using it for business purposes. I figure it's not worth the risk. So just for shits and giggles, we're gonna go in and say, how much would it cost to do a zero dollar deductible? We're gonna calculate it, how much does it go up? Oh my God. This will be funny. Woo! Whoa! Woo! Whoa. Wow! <laughs> Holy shnikes. So that went from $8,600 a year to $14,000 a year. Why would someone choose that? Because they're a the dumbass. So this may be anecdotal. thing that I noticed most with people in high premiums or high deductibles or very low deductibles was uh, people that were driving more vehicle than they could afford. So Ooh. they bought like a fancy Mercedes. Okay. They couldn't, they were uh, tapped they out gotta, on like, their- uh, If this thing gets crunched, I'm in big trouble. I'm screwed. Well, it's more for the point, they would have super high deductibles at that point. Mm. Uh, because what they were, they were tapped out on the monthly payment. Now that we've done all this, there's one other thing that we haven't discussed, which is really relevant, which is an umbrella policy. Yeah. We have an umbrella policy because basically, in the situation that the uh, driver of the car that hit our Ferrari, she's facing right now. She had insufficient insurance to cover the cost of our car. It's very probable that our insurance company is going to sue her and she's personally liable. What will happen is the first thing they're going to do is they're going to go to Geico. Yep. And they're going to say, your driver with this As policy number. As she was number, insured by Geico yeah, with the we'll Texas say, minimums. We'll say, your your driver hit our insured. We paid out. Here's all of our bills. We'd like to be reimbursed. Geico will go, yes, you're correct. Our person did hit it, hit you. We see that you paid out a hundred and some odd thousand dollars for Ferrari, California, but she only has $25,000 of coverage. So here's 25 G's. Yeah, good luck. And, and, yeah, Geico, yeah. and then Geico, Geico goes, woohoo, we scored. And, and then Geico will also say, oh, by the way, before you cash that check, you have to sign this paper saying that you're not going to pursue our insured for any other damages. Right. So at this point, our insurance is going to go do one of two things. They're either going to sign it, take the 25 G's, and just take the L, take the loss Oof. on it, keep it as an expensive you know, price of doing business, or they're going to not sign that document and then they could take her to court now. That's assuming she has any assets to sue her for. Right, which correct. They're going to know. And Geico will still represent her in court. Really? That's the part that yeah. shocks me. You're, that, if you read through your policy yeah. documents, that's one of the things that you're, but like, that you're paying It's going to be like a generic for. lawyer. Insurance companies have really good lawyers. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's a good lawyer? It's not like some guy who like no, is I mean, a functional they, alcoholic they have, or something? <laughs> no, they have... <laughs> Insurance companies have really good good lawyers. But get. the reason they're going to need a lawyer is because our insurance could try and sue her. Right. And they'll have to defend her. Right. And very likely that our insurance would probably get some sort of judgment. It's hard to say. Yeah. I, I, Who knows? Now you're going to have to start talking to lawyers and right. judges and all so, that. But, I, that's but here's the thing. If she had an umbrella policy, let's say, let's hypothetical, mm -hmm. our insurance sues her and they win. If she does not have an umbrella policy, she's now on the hook for whatever that char that judgment is. Mm -hmm. Let's say they say, "Oh, you you owe the whole car, you owe us 150 grand or whatever." She's on the hook for that. They could garnish her wages, take assets, whatever. If she has an umbrella policy, that's when the umbrella policy would kick in and say, "Here you go. Here's 150 grand." Yeah, I, um, you're going to have a deductible with an umbrella yes. policy, so most of them are 1% for a million dollar policy. So right. in theory, you know, this is all hypothetical because right, right. we don't know what's going to happen because we don't care. That's right, what, at this point, that's what our, our insurance is for. Yeah, it's out of our hands. Um, she would potentially have to pay $10,000. So if it was $150, I think Geico would still pay the 25000 so she would pay the ten thousand, which would put it up to thirty five thousand, and then her umbrella policy would bridge the gap between the thirty five thousand and let's say the one fifty. That's ten percent, not one percent. Or of the policy. Of the of the policy. Oh damn! You have to pay the. I policy. think. Well, that's again. You're gonna have to check your policy documents. Woo. I would assume it's of your policy. Okay. Of your policy limits. Well, either way, still it's better knowing a hundred grand. Yeah. All right. So I know this was a little bit boring, but. I hopefully, don't think so. Hopefully it was helpful. I don't helpful. think anybody who can afford an actual supercar finds this boring. No. Well, yeah. So those of you that are interested are going to find this very interesting. And you are else. a teenager here. <laughs> you, you pieced out 
12 minutes yeah. ago. <laughs> You're uninsurable anyway. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. If you guys have other things that you want us to go in depth on, we can. We can try and find experts. Obviously, not every topic we're going to have Adam as our expert, but we'll have other experts that Declared we can... What are you talking about? I'm saying if there's non-insurance questions. Yeah. Is there something that Adam isn't an expert oh. on? Ooh. Declared value policies. Yeah, those. <laughs> which, which, if you guys want to hear about declared value policies, we have a friend who said he would help us out. We can do that. So maybe that's another video we we'll do. We have a subject expert. Yes. That's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Again, go visit normalguyssupercar.com. Use the code NGS10. Hook yourself up with 10% off everything we sell. And go like, share, and subscribe. We appreciate that. But that's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. We're going to be doing a lot of cool car stuff, so you're going to want to stay tuned. There will be... Sweet. There will be... Full coverage. Oh, it's full coverage. Which doesn't exist. Oh, yeah. Full coverage.